For more on this, we're joined now by Mwakirti Mohaneng, a coordinator for Right to Know campaign in Gauteng. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohaneng, for your time this evening. Um, can you tell us, you've been opposing uh, the use of surveillance uh, technology by the police for some time now. Previously, it hadn't been given the green light uh, by ministers. Now, it seems that a couple of ministers have given their approval, and that's why this has now been gazetted. What do you think has changed? Well, um, good afternoon to um, South Africa. I think as right to know, we have to state categorically that we, we, we were surprised when the minister gazetted this, because as you mentioned, <coughs> we have been fighting against um, the use of the likes of grabbers, the use of anything that um, intercept communication and uh, that, that intercepts what uh, the, the, the community of South Africa is entitled to, uh, what is enshrined into the Constitution, and which is the right to privacy. Um, the, the, the minister gave uh, the police uh, this uh, maybe leeway to uh, be able to purchase these grabbers. And I think we, as right to know, we are surprised because we thought before that could happen, um, maybe oversight over the use of this particular technology has to be introduced mm -hmm. uh, because we have seen how the South African police and uh, maybe South African security agencies have abused this technology before. We have seen how they have invaded the privacy of the journalists and those who oppose them politically. And uh, that's why at the current moment, we, 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 we are just surprised when uh, the minister um, gave a green light to this. So as you said there, um, you know, despite only being granted exemption to purchase this technology now, the police has already uh, been in possession of, uh, as you call it, these cell phone grabbers uh, for at least the last two years, illegally so. Uh, and there have been reports, as you mentioned, of them abusing that technology uh, to spy on politicians, on journalists. Is there any proof of that wrongdoing? And, and do you know to what extent uh, the police have been challenged on illegally owning this technology? I think the public should remember the, 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 the case of Sam Sol, um, who, 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 who is the journalist for Amabungani. Uh, that journalist uh, was reporting on a case of um, the former president, Jacob Zuma, uh, the case of corruption. And um, the, 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 the information was intercepted. I mean, the, the, the communication was intercepted uh, when the journalist was talking to, uh, to the sources. And I, I think that is a proof enough that this abuse is, uh, I mean, can uh, get to or a certain level which is abusive. I think uh, another another issue that um, we can remember of um, Zirigasi of Africa, or Africa, um, the, the the journalist in the Sunday Times, uh, the the the, the um, e e communication was intercepted illegally um, when they were communicating uh, o o over the case, and uh, I think that case was uh, um, went through the the, the, the K, I mean the court in Pretoria where I think um, it was found that uh, the, the the state security was using uh, this illegally so let me just um, just state categorically that uh, the use of this crepper to invade people's uh, uh, privacy nef uh, nefariously uh, can be, uh, I mean, can 
uh, I mean, can be used at, against a political opposition. It can be used against um, maybe if you look at in a, 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 a uh, economics, uh, maybe the, the, the competitors uh, can be, I mean, their communication can be intercepted. And also even the whistleblowers, their communication can be intercepted. And I think uh, South Africans can only imagine um, the, 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 the dangers of getting uh, the communication of the whistleblowers uh, intercepted. Uh, especially in, in the current corrupted uh, terrain that we are operating under as South Africa. So I think uh, everyone has to be concerned uh, uh, when uh, the same state security agencies and the police, which has not been uh, overhauled as per uh, the, 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 the results of court, uh, if you remember the Methodist Commission, the uh, state still refuses to engage the, the, the report from the commission, which highlighted the wrongdoings of, uh, of the police. So I, I think we are standing at the current moment, the police is oversight or the, there is no um, oversight which can be trusted because if you look at um, the... the, the the the, 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 the the parliament uh the not even journalists can get into um uh, the discussions which are happening in the parliament when they are doing oversight and you also look at uh, the office of the inspector general i think we have been arguing that it's, it has been it's understaffed and it's not doing its job properly and the RICA judges, which are supposed to be oversight of over the surveillance, especially uh, mass surveillance, I think uh, we have argued that it's not doing its job. So the police itself is not; uh, it has not been over overhauled, but mm. they are given these powers, and it's possible that they can abuse and uh, these powers, and then they can use. Uh, the, 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 the technology against the opposition. Yeah. A apart from the obvious trampling of, of, of the rights, as you've just mentioned, the lack of the necessary oversight to control and to regulate this, uh, one must also consider the worst case scenario given the state of the South African police force and the rampant corruption there, that should this technology fall into the hands of criminals, either through negligent or through, you know, corrupt passing on of the technology to, to you know, the gangs that we know are rife in South Africa, uh, that that could, that could be catastro catastrophic. Um, I want to find out from you, as right to know, what are you planning to do to challenge this gazetted, uh, these gazetted regulations? Well, um, I, I think you will understand that as right to know, we are victims of surveillance of different types. We have been physically surveilled. Um, the state security agency has um, sent warm bodies in our meetings to listen and get, gather information around what we do. And we suspect that um, also the digital surveillance has been done on us. And uh, if you all know, um, some of our comrades will be launching a, a, a very interesting platform um, which will be looking at the RICA judgment. So I think we are still in discussion with um, other people who are working on the issue and the, 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 the plans will be uh, announced very soon. And I think one of the possibilities which exist um, when the discussions are going on is the possible legal challenge of this kind of uh, uh, gazetting of uh, what has been uh, regarded by uh, the Constitutional Court to be, uh, I mean, sections of uh, the RICA law has been uh, found to be illegal. So we are surprised when the government has to reform RICA gazettes, this kind of uh, legislation. So we will definitely be challenging. 
Thank you very much uh, for your insights. Uh, more kids in Wanaheng, right to know as Gauteng coordinator, giving us a little bit of insight into this newly gazetted exemption uh, allowing the South African police force uh, to surveil ordinary citizens. Still